Hello and welcome to coverage of the Magic Online Community Cup. We're in Renton, Washington, and we are watching, well, the community a little bit behind coming into this round. Yeah, but, uh, but not very much. But not much, just basically one match win different. Take a look at our, our feature match here, Ryan Spain. Magic Digital Designer the here. The mastermind behind the Limited Resource <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Able to grow a better beard than me. Wow! <laughs> Just the full <laughs> daggers. <laughs> One, two, three. And the glare from him, too. Uh, it's all true, though. I can't even argue. Frank Laporte challenging him in the beard department there. Yeah, Frank's beard is uh, definitely something to be... Burly. It's a burly beard. It is. Formative choice, a mix of everything. So, okay. So, uh, we're going to go down. Th those guys are, are ready to play. Uh, Frank Lepore playing Perplexing Chimera deck. Okay. So, uh, and, and so, what was Ryan on again? And He's Ryan, on Ryan the singing on Re Ryan theme. has the singing theme. He's got the Isa and the Wanderer Bard. I can't believe you guys didn't like the soul. I like the soul. you got to get some no, soul I, music. I, I mean, I like, I like soul. I, I, I'll... Yeah. I'll Soul was working for me. Frank Lepore once had a rap written about him. Did he? One of the key lyrics. When it rains, it Frank Lepore's. Right. He'll make you black and blue like the dark slick shores. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Did you this write could this have No, no. So, so a couple, couple things coming in from Twitter. All right, what do you got? Um... The, the lamp head is used of the seven lamps of fire in Revelation. So, you know, I don't know what any of that no, meant, but, but I'll buy it. Sounds like afterlife kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the expert yeah. breakdown. I also, the, uh, I also cut out of those classes for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. So. Sylvan Caryatid, Elvish Mystic. Yeah, a good amount of mana here for, for Frank. Uh, but, uh, Doesn't you know, attack. I'm not. I got to tell you something. Having watched Standard and Block for the last year, there's nothing perplexing to me about an Elvish Mystic or a Sylvan Carry added. Uh, I guess a yeah, Mystic maybe. So I, I, I'm not buying that. That's That card's too good. Yeah, it's just too good. I, if your card's really good, it has to really pull its weight. So here's uh, Siren of the, of the um, Silent Song here for Ryan. A nice start against uh, what we have from Frank, just two ground creatures. be interesting to see, you know, Perplexing Chimera comes down here. You know, does does Frank get control of the Wanderer Bard and then he's using your own ingredients against you? That's that's a flavor win. Now, there's one interesting thing that I wonder if I'm sure Ryan's aware of, which is Frank didn't attack with his Elvish Mystic, and he basically telegraphed that he has a Ranger's Guile or like a giant growth effect or something along those lines that for whatever reason he wanted to keep up instead of attacking. Uh, on the turn. So Ryan's going to be at least aware of that. Though looking at his hand, I don't think it matters. He <laughs> <laughs> can't really do much. So just uh, just also just going back to the... Oh, uh, geez. Pelucranos on turn three ah. here. Yeah. Going back to the perplexing Chimera and the Sphinxes kind of idea. Mm. Um, We're still stitching that story Well, together. no. The Chimera was the mother of the Sphinx. In, in, in mythology, apparently. I did not know that. Yeah, well, Stephen Wise on Twitter did, and he let us know. So the question so. is, do our judges know that? <laughs> well, you know... Remember, I, the players uh, don't get to sell their... They don't get to say, did you guys know? I don't know if my voice will carry 20 feet to where Graham Stark is standing. It's unlikely that it will. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what. If anybody in the room knows, it will be Graham. Like, yeah. he, he really does know his stuff when it comes to this stuff. He talks about it on his podcast... Tap tap concede. I've, I've I've loved those episodes of it, and uh, so if anybody knows, he does. <laughs> so Ryan's trying to get that pretty. I mean, he's playing five colors. Right. Like, went all the way for the you know crowd's favor, just for the flavor. <laughs> crowd's flavor. Yeah, crowd's flavor. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, this, this Why is Court of Calling in this deck? Yeah, it's not. This is not feeling like a very flavorful deck from. I'm getting a little worried that Frank is going to get 
pummeled in the uh, in the judging portion. Now, I have to say, his deck looks pretty good. Yeah, is that, uh, yeah so hopefully he can pick up a bunch of I match would, points. Here. I would gladly draft this deck. <laughs> I mean, look, look <laughs> at his opponent's <laughs> mana base. <laughs> 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 mana can influence Java Mike as Swamp Island. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. I w would you would you be shocked to see at the end of these three rounds, you know, Ryan Spain with you know fifteen points and Frank Lepore with six or nine? <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan would probably be pretty pleased to pull one match oh, yeah, out of this deck. I think that that's what I think his goal is is one. So Pelucranos kills the. Uh, like he's he's in an unwinnable situation. Yeah. Like he can't kill Felucranos. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in in the meantime, uh, six damage for. He can get to seven mana. He can hypnotic siren it. Uh, you're right. <laughs> and he's actually only a full three mana away. <laughs> uh, this could get interesting now. Now I did see um, that Graham Graham Stark, one of our judges, yeah. has been kind of poking yeah. around over there. <laughs> And uh, maybe even chatting a little bit with some of the contestants. Uh, I think that the idea being that, you know, if they've got something real clever, he wants to know about it. He doesn't want it to go over his head and, and have it be his fault. Like, hey, I just yeah. didn't get it. Yeah. So even though they don't get to go in front and, like, actually make a case, I think that maybe they could catch a little of his ear on the sure. way by every once in a sure. while. So if they're good at networking, they might be able to. Yeah, yeah. So I, I quit just something for the judges to keep in mind when people are doing the Athreos decks. Like, do you, do you punish people if they didn't play, you know, they c couldn't play Godless Shrine, but what about if they played a gate in that Oh, super In that points. spot. Well, in, and, like, see, this is where you really need the judge. You need to say, judge, look what I did. I didn't play Godless I did, Shrine. And, and I, I played gates, you know. <laughs> like, this is, that's got to be a big flavor win. Oh, but the Hypnotic Siren had to come down as a one drop. And this, and this is where you... You see, Perplexing Chimera is just actually good. It's just good. Like, it's going to just lock up this board state. Anything that Ryan Spain does that could potentially swing it back in his favor is just going to get switched. Ha -ha. It's not like he has sweepers None available. He's going to be able to turn on his ESOG. Wow, I just took a, look at a quick look at the early game results. Community, 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 community. Now, those aren't match wins. Those are game wins. But sure. Which, I mean, does that foreshadow the fact that maybe they won't do quite as well in the judging? You know, who I, knows? I, I mean, it, it certainly looked like... Th how, does Aaron have a win? No, none of them. They're, they're all community wins. No, Aaron. I'm saying Aaron. Is Aaron one of those wins? Oh, I thought you meant yes, Forsyth. Yes, she is. Aaron Campbell does so have Aaron, a win. Aaron has, like I, like I said, I thought Aaron had the potential to be a 24-pointer here. Yes, I agree. I think, uh, you know, an MVP for the team. Yeah. My gut says she probably won't get the full points uh, on the uh, judging, but we'll get very high marks and definitely could 3-0. Yeah, that I think Erin Campbell's put herself in a spot to be the, the highest point getter here yeah. for the Iron Root Chef Yeah, challenge. she might be a, a gate away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, she, she, did, did she did end up running the Godless Shrines, right? No, I don't think she did. I okay. think she just... Helen ran, Helen ran the Godless Shrines. Oh, what an oversight. Helen's normally so fastidious and just... Yeah. Properly accessorized. So we're going to see uh, Isan go get something. Uh, something that is probably not going to be alive for very long. Right. Although, interestingly, another Hypnotic Siren. You know, interestingly, that pack rat could be a way out. Yeah, there was two pack rats, I well, think. Well, he's, he's going to be able to search yeah. it out next turn. Yeah. One, two, three. And then if he has a land, he can start discarding to it? Yeah. Interesting. And Lepore's out of gas, sort of. He can he can court of calling for There's three your land. here. Wow. Go get rat. Make another rat. You know, chump block for. Oh, I mean, he's getting he's getting. He can like he. I think he's deciding if he wants to play one of these creatures. Oh, can he? See, this is really interesting, BDM, because what you said, like, it gets around per perplexing chimera. Like, right. he just gets to get a, a pack rat if he wants it. So Shipwreck Singer is just going to be a chump blocker, and then he's going to get Pack Rat. He gets the key. Yeah, he said, I don't want the Shipwreck Singer. My dad Frank gets chose not to... Uh, Frank chose not to take it. Wow, this is interesting. A turn three Plukronos against a deck with, I don't think, any removal. <laughs> so now we're going to... Okay, here comes the Horizon Chimera. That could uh -huh. be... That shouldn't matter. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, he's at eight. Fred, Ryan's at eight. Yeah, no, you're right. But he can actually double block it and kill it. But, like, and then if everything else just attacks. Yes, he's in bad shape. All right, what is this? Oh, no, he tapped his all four. Okay, Cloak Siren. So this is just another chump blocker. Huh, I think Ryan's going to have to... Like, is he just trying to bait the uh, perplexing chimera? I think he I think he might be. Wow, is this thing attacking? I'm just going to chump block three, four, five. I guess he would have to lose Yisan. All right. So the Cloak Siren takes care of the Horizon Chimera. Don't, play that, don't play that land. He played the land, though. He, he does have things he can get rid of. I mean, you certainly don't want to cast a good spell. You want your, in fact, you want your, so oh, he wants to play the land because he wants to get that soul into his yard with the pack rat. Yeah, and then he can draw four-ish, three right now. Oh, here comes a quarter calling. Yeah, a quarter calling for the world. What did he get? Maybe just get another Pelucranos and just ship that one away and wipe the board when you untap or something. We don't know what Frank has in his deck. He's going to get something. It's X equals six. Could be a, a soul of some sort. Looks like he hasn't decided quite yet. He gets... Oh, the, uh, really? So he actually didn't get a six. He got Master of Predicaments on five. <laughs> and the very flavorful domestication. Because who doesn't remember the, the myth of the perplexing <laughs> chimera who tamed animals? <laughs> 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 uh, Frank, oh. I have you in the zero camp right He's now. He's in purgatory here. Yeah, <laughs> Purgatory would be more flavorful <laughs> is what uh, Randy offered off. Oh, uh, he's right. All right, now there's the pack rat. What's the theme in that good but story? But unfortunately, it's, it's, the, it's air the Air Force that's going to be a big gotcha. issue here. It's very good. It's very good. And like, yeah, I mean... So is the domestication right. trying to take yeast on here? Yeah, um, I believe so. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the pack rat has arrived. I mean, Frank can just go get another Master of Predicaments with his board as it stands, right? He's got... Maybe it, well, he's just going to attack. He's considering if he wants to send in the uh, Horizon Chimera and offer a trade here. He does not. <laughs> now, this does allow Ryan, though, to activate his Shipwreck Singer, shrinking it down the 4-4 uh, the four four and allow it to trade with the Cloak Siren, bringing him down to 1. He does not get to activate Rat this turn if he does that, though. He could also just double block and, and trade 2 for 1, but this isn't looking good. No. Nope. Not looking good for Ryan Spain here. Ryan can take solace in the fact that he's going to score more points than Frank <laughs> Lepore no matter what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how these matches play out. It's true, because, I mean, the, the thing with Frank's deck, since he seemingly hasn't really gone on theme much, you know, he's is that he's that gotten 3-0 this. I yeah, mean, he's, he's built he's a real deck. Direction. He's got some chimeras. He's got some predicaments. I think that, yeah, the Master he's of Predicaments is cute. But yeah. He's going to get one He's got point. a Horizon Chimera. I think Frank's going to get three total points for judges. Uh, you know, the judges like could be in insulted by yeah? the nod. You know, it's like the, the just like, you're just really, you're just going to play <laughs> some flying creatures. Like, you might as well have just played a real full yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. No, I can, I can see that. All right. So what does Ryan Spain come up with here? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. He can make two rats. But he's going to die in the air here. Yeah. Or is he? Actually, wait. He can activate the <laughs> thing, <laughs> shrink it down, block, like very much on take one. So Frank just needs to ship with the squad here, right? Yes. <laughs> attack, 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 attack. He's got Ranger Skyle, which, which if it goes on anything is, is lethal as well, like even on the Horizon Chimera. So yeah, I think he just right-click, attack with all. Yeah, 
opponent could have anything. I mean, that is true. <laughs> like, <laughs> your opponent could have l literal anything in this situation. All right, and Frank okay. does, in fact, just ship him in there. Oh. And wins the first game. Did he? Did he? He won the first game. <laughs> Did he? Look, I'm not saying he won the war here, <laughs> but he won the battle. All right, so we're going to take a look at what the players built, you know, what they had to build with, I should say, what their foundation was. Bjorn opened up a basket with whim of Whims of Fates. Uh, Aaron Campbell, Athreos, God of Passage. Paul Chion, Isan the Wanderer Bard. Mm -hmm. Frank Lepore um, had a perplexing chimera, didn't know what to do with it in a very flavorful way. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I'm really confused by this card. My deck is about how confused this card left me. You know, <laughs> you shouldn't say that that loud. That's his only chance to score some points. <laughs> That's his only out. That's, That's the only live play he's got. <laughs> to just pin a judge down and say, look how meta I got. I was so confused. I built a good deck on accident. <laughs> I didn't understand the rules. Um, Scott McCallum, Scotty Max, Scott Athreos, and Heroes Podium. Uh, Mariah had Athreos and Isan. Uh, Sean Plott had Heroes Podium, and Tom Ross had Chimera and uh, Isan. All right, so we're back underway here uh, with Ryan Spain versus Frank Lepore. And uh, Ryan has a turn to Pack Rat. Nice. Now, maybe not the most flavorful start. Right. But, but again, Pack Rat, but I Rat liked Pack. It. Yeah, the Rat Pack, the or maybe it was the... Yeah. Which one did he say? He said it was because... The so rat pack, but he needed four. Then you can't. Okay, I still like it. I mean, you got, but but you know, you can't. It's hard to have fours. You got to cram a lot of cards in to get a lot of flavor in there. Yes, that is true, and he did. <laughs> so I think he just goes off here, right? Make a rat. Go. Or is he going to play his? Is he going to play Yisan or something? I mean. Look, if there's one thing I've learned from covering standard for the last nope, year and a half, a it's rat. do that. <laughs> Make a rat. <laughs> Make a rat. <laughs> Stop doing other things other than making rats and uh, and successful will join you shortly. Uh oh, here's a five drop though. It is master of predicaments. It's not gonna do it. Yeah. I mean, it will block like it, it keeps him back for a turn, but the train's riding now and and the rat packs on stage. They're singing. What's the what's the fourth card there? In, uh <laughs> that is interpret the signs. The valueiest, that, but that's also that's also that's I, I, I interpret the signs. I can see having a little bit of flavor in the perplexing chimera deck because you're thinking. Yeah, you're you're understanding. You're All solving. Right. <laughs> so explain to me, Hydra Broodmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Brood? No, brood. You're brooding. You're thinking. You know, I'm giving you credit for this, <laughs> but. <not laughs> <him>. <laughs> There is no <laughs> way that's what he's going. Do you really think that's what he was going oh, for? Frank, no way. Even, does brooding even really mean thinking? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, people will talk about brooding. You know, I brooded on it. Yeah. You know, I'm a brood master. Brewmaster, maybe. He's like Goodness the Hydra sake. Brewmaster. An upcoming podcast. <laughs> Broodmaster. <laughs> Broodmaster. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Which then ties it back to the master prediction. You know, I'm glad you're running that and not judging, because you would just come up with this stuff for everybody. <laughs> oh, you're a genius. <laughs> He's like, I submitted the deck I played in a tournament last week. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Spain firmly on the pack rat plan here. I love that. But a lot of mana available here for Frank Lepore, and there's a Hydra Broodmaster. Yeah, now that's a 7-7. Seven seven. Can we start calling that card Conley Woods because it's the Broodmaster? <laughs> <laughs> so are these going to be chump pack rats eventually, or what are we yeah, looking eventually at Eventually, maybe next turn. I mean, he does. He can triple block. <laughs> it's like, it would actually work out pretty well for him. Also, pack rat matches nicely against Perplexing Chimera. Like, this is interesting now. We've actually got a real game on our hands. Remember, Ryan's down to 11. He's taking hits from his mana confluence. That's what it took to be a slave to flavor. One, two, three, four, five. Fire of the Fang Coast. A consistent power. I think you let him have a 4-4 four, four flyer well here <laughs> instead of stealing your brood <laughs> brood master. Uh, But that is going to trade. 
obviously not there for yeah, okay. it's not there for power. I'll see. And it has fun. <laughs> Sweet yes, feral invocation. Yes. So right now Frank's trying to decide no, what he sir. wants to do here. A slave to flavor, right here. There's not a card in my deck that I cannot explain for its flavor inclusion. How about you? Mana complex. How about you? There are oh, some spell. How about spell? <laughs> the mana base is, you know, like, give me a break on the lands. <laughs> we'll just listen in. Confluence, you mean the stadium by which he plays it? There you go. The confluence. I don't All right, know so Frank did let him have the 4-4. Four four. <laughs> you guys are really threatening. I am really happy about the rat pack. Although I will say... Good. Ryan will call you out. <laughs> Reading pool, you know, concerts. They, uh, We're going with yeah, this is not going to fare well with the judges. I, I fear for the community team here. But the good news is that Frank is beating down quite nicely with a 7-7 and a 4-4. So <laughs> at least he will salvage three points. And, you know, if he gets a point or two, he can get a pretty decent number of points overall. How many... Uh, can you just kill him with Brewmaster here? What do you mean, kill him? Can't he just monstrous it? Uh, did it not get blocked? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so it's one, two. He can give it plus three, plus three. That's ten. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan had the block. He had to actually chump. Mm, not fated to win this match. Boom. That's it. Frank wins. Did he? Did he, though? <laughs> Count and dejected Ryan Spain. <laughs> Ryan Spain goes. Ryan Spain goes to lobby the judges. <laughs> that is, that is exactly, exactly what, what he doing? did. Really? <laughs> Gets up and says, judge. "Where is the nearest judge?" Franklin Bush is like, "Whatever, I'll take nine points." So we're gonna look at what the Wizards team uh, built. Helen, we saw, was building. Athreos got a passage. Uh, Aaron Forsyth had uh, perplexing chimera and whims, which is you know pretty. Pretty interesting. That's Dawson ambitious. And yes. it's a little double flavorful. Uh, Matt Gregory, the Perplexing Chimera, Chimera. Dave Humphreys, the Heroes Podium, and Athreos. Tom Lapilli, Heroes Podium. Ryan Spain, Isan. We've we've seen his deck, his his uh, song book there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Turian, in the Whims of Fates, and Worth Wolpert, Heroes Podium, and Isan. Worth had a tough one there. Heroes Podium and Isan is. I mean. They work together, like, just on their base, but how do you make a cohesive, you know... I mean, I guess I just start looking for legends at every casting cost. Yeah. Nissan and the Heroes I, just, I don't think the judges are going to love that. Like, they'll be like, sure, like, you did something. But. Hey, I, I think I think we got a red zone match lined up. All right, why don't, we head it, why don't we send it over to Randy for a little red zone? Yeah, I've been watching matches, and uh, so far, it's been a blowout in favor of the Community Cup. Putting up wins right and left. Uh, I saw Mariah... Took game one from Aaron Forsyth. I want to see how this one turned out. So I've got uh, the second game queued up. Mariah's on Atrios Yisan. Aaron's on Perplexing Chimera, Whim of the Fates. So let's see how this turns out. I do like the way that uh, Aaron continues to use the high quality ingredients. The foil cards just, they just look a cut above. Uh, Mariah leads with an Elvish Mystic. Aaron's got a Magma Jet to, to burn it. Voice of Resurgence comes down from Mariah. Uh, Voice of Resurgence is everywhere. But that's a sweet one for, for A3Os. I think that's great. Also, uh, yeah. for flavor, yeah. Yeesan. Okay. Like, it's also in the Bard deck, right? The Voice. Oh, sure. Wait, what is that? What, blocking <laughs> with Paragon? No, is that a Blood Baron? That is a Blood Baron. This was your... You were a little confused about the Blood Barons in this deck? Yeah. You don't buy them as uh, Athreos or Yisan? No. I mean, I get the color. Well, you know what they do? They attack for the win. Because uh, this is the point where Aaron just scoops them up. By the way, Seder Piper, did Ryan find that? I don't know. I for don't his, think he did. For his I don't think he did. Rats? Yeah, for the rats. So that's Mariah taking another game for the Community Cup. So the Community Cup at this point... One, two, three, four, five, six matches. Wow. On the Community Cup side. The other two matches, still underway. Yeah, I've got one of them uh, pulled up right now if we want to jump over. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, when, I was when you, you could can. It looks it's like two matches left to watch live. Yeah, Mike Turian versus Scotty Mack, Scott McCallum. So Turian is up a game here. So this is game two. 
So flavor considerations aside, <laughs> prophetic flame speaker brain maggot brimaz, <laughs> not bad as far as power level goes. And it looks like flame speaker's getting in there. Faded retribution and whims of the fates or what he hits, <laughs> so, <laughs> so things went a little sideways from our super powerful <laughs> cards, but... <laughs> so, Turian basically built a deck where he ser searched for Fated and then put every card that had the word Fate. I think that was kind of what he was going right. for. And, and Scott McCallum looked up, looked for cards that said Obzadat. <laughs> <laughs> and Brimaz. Well, Brimaz is He's a hero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scott is on Hero's Podium with Atrios. Yeah. Okay, fair. Okay, so I'll take, I'll accept Obes at then. Yeah, I, I, no. Right, where does Prophetic, where does Prophetic ghost coming back from the underworld? fit in? Prophetic Flame Speaker feels like a raw power card choice to me. I don't Faded. Prophetic, though, prophetic, prophetic, prophetic and prophetic. Fate line yeah. up pretty well together. They do. All right, I'll allow it. It's not a home run, Randy. That's, I think it, I mean, it's, I think a it's, I think it's, it's, it's going to win in some games. It's a single. Like, if it's even a single, even really, like an infield yeah. single is plenty yeah. good enough. It's he's playing money ball. He's like, yeah, I got on base. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. There you go. It was a walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prophetic prison. Prism. Yeah. Elixir. This room mortality feels like it should have been in some of the other decks, perhaps. Is he just dead here? Turian's at five. Obsidat has haste. Generally just dead to Obsidat. He doesn't have... He's dead. He's dead. All right. <laughs> now, he three. was up a game, though, right? Yeah, no, that'll that'll force a game three. Okay, so we're going to get a game three there. Yeah, they're still playing, and uh, Sean Plott and Matthew Gregory are still playing as well. So I can try to start watching that one. Did we figure out what uh, Matt Gregory ended up doing with his... Ingredients. Yes. Uh, remember, he went for the oh yeah the okay. odd connection of oh, yeah, yeah. chimeras and sphinxes, which we determined is not an odd connection. It might at might all. be a real thing. So yeah. So so I'm yeah, I've got Sean Plot and Matt Gregory up. If uh, if you want to look at my yeah, Matt, Matt Gregory's deck is hollowed fountain, Asperia, wind reader sphinx, prognostic sphinx, metami the ageless, perplexing chimera, riptide chimera, master predicaments, Jace the living guild pact, T sphinx's revelation, which now is flavorful. God, I am not. Because I can't watch live? I don't have the knowledge. Void yes, Snare and Voyage Zen. I've, I've got Turian's game up if we want to watch okay, that. Okay, yeah, let's watch, let's watch game three of this, see if Turian can pull one out for the Wizards team. Who apparently are getting kind of smacked around but who, here. Who do, you ahead, who do you think's ahead on flavor from what we saw in deck building? Well, e even aside from that, I'm looking at the, the list of matches, and the winner is community, 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 and there's two matches outstanding. And if, I, if that's all I saw, I would say that Wizards is ahead on each <laughs> other. <laughs> like, y y it, they are not necessarily mutually exclusive, but right. in many cases they are. Yeah, the community decks look tend to look a little bit more like playable decks, you know. Yeah. Which is the equivalent of, you know, heating something up in the microwave. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, no, you it's don't not good. Like 15 points if it's not, If it's not water or 15 seconds for a pint of haagen <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards is on the board, by the way. Okay. Matthew Gregory does win his match. Sean Plott is the only community member team to lose so far. So hopefully he gets a whole bunch of points. <laughs> <laughs> we have Aethrios here for uh, for Scott McCallum. That's his nod to flavor. Well, he went Godless yeah. Shrine, Godless Shrine, Aethrios. So yeah. I don't know if we're calling that a nod to flavor. So Sean he also made the mistake of putting Godless Shrine in the Aethrios deck? Yes. yes. We're confident that's a mistake. That's right? a yeah, I was mistake. told it was a mistake by a judge. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm calling it a two-point swing in the wrong direction. Two points. That's what I'm calling. Two points per judge. Yes. Right. That's a six that's points. So and they're going to be conferring matches. as well. Yeah. Although they're all kind of stubborn, so th they'll make their own decision oh and yeah, stick absolutely. with it. But yeah. Not Aaron, a lot of us. Uh, Aaron Campbell navigated that correctly. W and we think match. so. <laughs> now I like the coins. So I, I like what Scott's I, I, doing here. I love though. the coinsmith. Yeah, coinsmith and Aethrios, That's cool. And you know what? I don't want to begrudge him for for having a sweet. Uh, devotion thing going here either. Like, you don't get yeah, marked yeah. down for your deck being good. 
Now the prophetic flame speaker is an issue. Uh, we decided prophetic fate. No, he just meant. Oh, I just <laughs> meant it's he an just issue meant in terms for of winning the game. Yeah. Gameplay. In terms He's of winning the game is yeah. an issue. He is getting whacked here for a couple of points of damage, and let's see what he. Uh, See what he finds. Oh, <laughs> whims of the fates again. I think he'd <laughs> rather have that one exiled and a fate foretold. I think we're going to see a fate foretold. I believe you're correct. Unless he's got some other big hitter. Flame speaker's not myth, uh, not legendary. So if he's got another one of those, he can jam it. Nice. He's got chromatic lantern and herborg. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only match that went to game three. The other seven all were too straight. Oh wow. Faded infatuation. Copying, Copying the prophetic <laughs> fate flame speaker. <laughs> I am in love. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing it on his turn, so he gets to scribe I, I, I would like to subscribe to this newsletter. This is <laughs> too good. And a fate foretold is going to come down as well. Wow. So Turian has awesome. two double strikers. And, 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 and five cards in hand. And an immensely flavorful turn. Yeah, a lot of fate. Yeah, just... Fate, fate, fate. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah. Wow. The judges are going to have their hands full with uh, Turian's deck. Like, he clearly was, was, was on theme for the theme that he chose. Oh, there's Brimaz. That'll change things. Yeah. He, it also puts him just one single mana symbol away from getting Aethrios online. Ooh. Yeah, that's six. Wow, Brimas looks great here. Need some sort of uh, removal. Well, Faded Conflagration would be just oh, about the just best thing ever right it. here. But he's tapping for green here. Three green, four green, and a black. Faded. What have uh, you done? Faded intervention. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I kind of like the simplicity. Like, it's not that clever, but everything having the word fate on it is kind of cool. Yeah. By the way, uh, sub note on this matchup, these are the last two undefeateds. Oh, wow. Oh. These, are the t these are the two guys that 3 0'd the draft this morning. And then there's Elixir. And, and it's a game three, so this is going to be. They both want to hang on to this title. Yeah, this is, this is the King of the Hill match. Yeah. Not that I'm team so format, obviously, individual and records aren't what it's all about, but still, these are the two 3 guys. And this is the difference between the community going up two matches versus... More than that, yeah. right? Current score, community is up nine points. Yeah. Wow. They have 6 won the round to this point. So if they win this, they could be up four Yeah, if matches. they 7-1, they're up four matches. Yeah. And that's coming into this down, right? Yeah, they were down two over, the yeah. over lunch. Uh, Underworld Coinsmith is getting a little... Uh, gross in here. A little taxing. Yeah. Two, two double underworld coins. Smith turns on Athreos. Wow. Just Athreos brazenly oh. enters the red zone. <laughs> Get in there. What are you going to do? Block with four power? What right. Are you uh, going to block and draw a card? Yeah. And, and I, like okay. th I like this attack a lot. I mean, it, it's not like he can guarantee that Athreos is going to stay a creature anyway, so you might as well get something out of it while he's uh, feeling wily. So Turian gets his card from Fate for Toll and his the draw fate? step. I think we might see Whims of the Fate. It's going to happen. It may oh, just be like, like digging. let's see what happens. I think he wants to try to find a uh, Fated, uh, fated con conflagration. conflagration is what he yeah, wants. Yeah, absolutely. Take down that Brimaz, and all of a sudden this board state looks way different. Fate for Toll on the Centaur. <laughs> Did not think I would see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I came in here to do coverage yesterday. There are no yesterday. bonus points for flavorful gameplay. Centaur's allowed to tell the future. I, right? I, I think if you watch the game and it seems a little, it seems like, you know, you see the cards interacting and you watch it to have some kind of flavorful yeah. interaction, I, I, you know. It, you it should. Can certainly it's right, tough, though, because the judges can't watch all. onto the profit? Like, or is he supposed to make the better gameplay move? He's supposed to put it on the profit. Really? Yeah. All right. So I just <laughs> I just heard from the floor speaking of flavor within the game that Day Nine said he didn't want a mulligan, 
Because heroes have to overcome hardship. Oh, <laughs> see, that is that is working hard. <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh my gosh! You, you, you don't give him a point for that. Like this, are, th- I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> there are reps for big pharma that don't lobby hard as, as hard as that. No kidding! <laughs> wow, is this Brimass hitting the red zone? Yep. He must have drawn another one. And Turian's actually going to chump block with the centaur to get the card, and he's going to double block. Ah, maybe a removal spell in tow here. What have we a got, hero's Scotty downfall. Mac? Yeah, definitely. Hero's downfall to take out the flame speaker. So a little two for one there. Oh, but you know what? This board Tureen needs gets a card back. Whims of the fate. Yeah. Hey, I see one sitting over there. <laughs> He's got four in his list. Wow. So this board state has gotten pretty ugly. I think we're gonna see it. This is it, right? Here's That's one. four mana. Five, Come on. I mean, it takes six. a while to tap your mana with a lantern yeah, in play. It does. Oh, it's Faded Retribution for seven. Oh. That has the word Fade on it. Oh, no. <laughs> so he's going to take three, six, nine, twelve here. Is that right? Or, or he can choose to do the opposite. Wow, Aetherios looking really nice right here. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decisions, decisions. Like, maybe he lets him get one Coinsmith back or something. I mean, remember, the way the Turians play this game, he has five cards in his hand still. And he also just scryed two. Now, he's at nine life with only five minutes on his clock, though, so he's got some work to do. He took nine, he took nine there, huh? Uh, no, I think he took six. Yeah, there's three, three creatures in the yard, so he let him have one back. Okay. Ooh, Brain Mega. This could definitely stifle the uh, the comeback plan. A lot of times when you see people make a game plan around a sweeper like that, they've got something very specific in mind as their big follow-up play. And uh, Brain Mega could easily uh, steal that. And it took a Fade, Fade Unraveler. Unraveler, I think. Yeah. And, and there's Brain Mega. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. We saw him just sort of Jam Brimass before, didn't really care if he lost it, and uh, there you go. Now, one other thing, though, that Turian also has an Elixir of Immortality, so if he wants, he can jump back up to 14. Ooh, just passes the turn. What is this? He's got five cards in his hand, and he just is like, go. He can cast anything in the game. Here's Hero's Podium. <laughs> Unfortunately, this doesn't That's do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can turn on Athreo, suddenly they would both mm. get a bonus. Yes. <laughs> Uh, tap out for podium. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is gonna be a fade, an instant speed faded retribution. You know, I, I got that. My gut tells me it might be. Like I think that I think that Turing just said like if he's got one in his hand, he's just like, yep, that's enough of a board for me to take a turn off here and just fire it off. Now I also will note here, upper left hand corner of your screen. Four and a half minutes for Turing and uh, Scotty Mac. Oh, it's Faded Return. Well, well, well. On Brimaz. Oh, well, an indestructible Brimaz. And he's going to get to block the uh, the Brain Maggot here and get back. Oh, it looks like he's not going to block the Brain Maggot. He wants to get the token. Oh, the t can the token block the Brain Maggot? No, no they got to block the same thing, yeah. right, of course. All right, so well, he gets to Brimaz. kill his Brimaz, though, so that's nice. Yeah. Wow, the timing on that is pretty nice. By the way, <laughs> like, is he hitting for the cycle yet here? <laughs> Retribution, return, he played infatuation. He only needs a conflagration to, to, <laughs> to hit for the cycle. <laughs> He's got all the faded cards. Played this game. And frankly, I think he would do just fine with that card right now. All right, and now it's time to do it. Mike Turian does best beat down, and he needs to get a move on here. Just under four minutes left on his clock. Scotty sitting at a pretty lofty 20 life. He's got to start whittling away at that life total here. Uh, Turian's in a decent spot with that elixir, putting him at a virtual nine life here. This is the last match as well, so I, I would suspect that there's a whole lot of people huddled around the monitors. Though I think in this spot... The correct strategy is just to let Turian play. Like you don't need—he doesn't need your feedback, and you're probably just going to slow him down. So I think you just let him go. Fate foretold. 
Still has five cards in his hand. I don't think there's been a turn where he didn't. Yeah. And you can see why the flavor aspect's worth so much, because you do have to play with cards that are... Suboptimal? You know, cl clumsier. Oh, uh, no. Perfect. Oh, oh no. Prophet <laughs> of uh, Right next to Brimaz. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to time myself out. <laughs> yeah, this is... This, he knows how to go deep. There's another Brimaz, though, still not doing anything with Hero's Podium. So this is the big question. What does Turian have to dump onto the table on the end step here? You got anything? Oh, he's got some action. There is action. Oh, maybe it's just an elixir. Yeah, just an elixir. How about a creature? Oh, no creature. Oh, jeez. <laughs> His third prophetic prism. <laughs> Under three minutes now for Mike Turian. Yeah, you can't take any damage with this stupid uh, Athreos. Yeah, he's got to be real careful. So he's going to serve up King Brimaz here. It looks like Brimaz is just going to eat a, a cat soldier and take a few damage here. Down to 14 for Scotty Mac. And another Prophet of Crufix. Didn't have any other targets that were reasonable, so here we go. Doesn't really do much, right? right? I mean, I guess yeah, it double it blocks scries. Brimaz. He gets to scry to. Wow, you better make this decision quick, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Two minutes, 15, se 15 seconds, and ticking. And he needs to get Scotty Mac from 14 to 0 in that time frame, or else he's going to lose this match. Leaving Scotty Mac the only undefeated player in the early stages of the Community Cup. Scotty Mac takes a shot at the Heroes Podium for two and bricks. Frank is grousing on public social media that people don't think his deck is flavorful. <coughs> what he thinks it is? Yeah, well, he says Hydra are the sibling of the Chimera. And then Brad, Brad Nelson quickly pointed out, what are the elves in the Caryatids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and is Lepore in there right now? Like, elves and Caryatids are the little friends of the Hydra. <laughs> no. I'm not buying it. Yeah, no. Nope, not buying what he's selling. I like his deck, though. It looked pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would play. All right. Under two minutes now. We're in the red here in the upper left. Watch that clock for Mike Turian. Whim to the yeah, face has it. been called. Here we go, kids. <laughs> oh, no. What is this? Hero's Podium. Scotty Mack has activated it for five. Look at that. And Aethrios has been revealed. What the heck does Heroes Podium do again? <laughs> <laughs> I think it burns your clock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Separate all your stuff into so three he, files. So he, he drew another Aethrios then. Yeah. So you get to put a card in your hand. with. Uh, yeah. Oh so God. there's yeah. three <laughs> piles here, and the clock is running... Oh, man! I think that Turian just put all of his in one pile and didn't get punished for it. <laughs> and Scott did? And Scott did the same and got fully <laughs> punished. <laughs> now, what happens here, though, he's going to have to let Scott... I guess he just he lets him have all of it, He right? lets him have everything. Yeah, yeah why do you lay it back that way. Oh, no! <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Turian, everybody! How did he do that? He's got a two-turn clock now. Mike, stop tapping for anything. Yeah. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> that the is file so and four, five, six, funny. seven, eight damage is going to have Scotty at three. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whims of the fates. Very flavorful <laughs> play by Mike. He should Curry. get bonus points here. 
This has got to be worth bonus points. He just lets fate decide who wins the match. His prophets <laughs> foretold victory. <laughs> 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 and here's eight damage, knocking Scott down to three. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and fate unraveler, essentially sealing the deal anyway, but there's no... That's it. <laughs> Turian's going to win with 30 seconds or so left on his clock once his... Once his uh, turn gets passed over to him. All right, that that's the most insane thing I've ever <laughs> that seen. That is absurd. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, when are they going to separate these into piles? And they're just like, submit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whims of the fates. If you separate them into piles, you're more likely to lose something, right? right. Yeah. And I don't think Turian had a choice, right? He's on the clock, and that's going to do it. Turian picks <laughs> wow. up the win. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Mike Turian, how do you do it? And